is a ghost story investigation visual novel type thing. Um, don't know much about it. Just had to, you know, download it. We're gonna see what's going on. All right. Um, all right. Uh, go, go on and leave. No, you don't need to remember. Just go. I'll be fine. Just go, please. Hello? Tabby. What? My head feels like a crushing eggshell. Can't see for shit. I think somebody spilled something gross and sticky all over my shirt. Um, let me see. Can we go to settings and make the text be just a little, little faster? Yeah. And where the fuck am I? It's darker here, but there's either enough moonlight or we're close enough to a street lamp for me to see that the floor is covered in dirt and splinters. There's a table next to me with a perfect handprint laid in the layer of dust. Probably mine from when I pulled myself up off the ground just now. Paint's chipped and peeling off every surface and I feel like I'm about to choke this breathing in the air. It's musty, not like the nice dried out paper smell of an old library. More like the smell of a crypt somebody just opened for the first time in years. Head still hurts. What was I doing last night? What time is it even? I uh, wait. Where the hell's my phone? You got a lot of questions, ma'am. And a mouth on you. Not sure I ended up here. But the worst I've woken up, not the worst I've woken up. Would it be too full of myself to figure I got blackout drunk trying to play with a cute bartender and she brought me back to her cozy, condemned house? No. Well, can get her number if I don't have my phone, so that's the first. And then, yeah, my phone. Okay, then. So we just not gonna talk about that blue gust of. Whatever that was. I have no idea what time it is, but it feels like it's gotta be past 1 a.m. at least. Do a digital clock on the floor, plugged to the wall, and covered in a layer of what looks like sawdust. This display is either dead or there's no power in the outlet, so I'm willing to bet the lights aren't working here either. Honestly, it's not the weirdest place I've had to stay tonight, and it seems safe enough, though. That's a lie. On a danger scale, this feels somewhere right around Scooby-Doo level. I'll probably be fine to grab my things, but I don't want to stick around and see an old asshole with a shotgun chase me off the property. There's a small table next to me, a pile of junk cluttered up in the corner, a coat closet near the stairs, and a telephone table just through the archway. Um, I feel like we'll probably check the coat closet first. It's definitely abandoned, probably private property. At the very least, gotta grab my wallet, phone, and key before I get out of here. Apologies for the intrusion. Okay. Hey. You all right in there? around what it's a pretty cat impression come on now i'm not set to rob the place so for starting you i just want to find my stuff and head on head on out hey what the heck is that so you happen to see a phone or wallet in there don't worry about your phone just go leave That's pretty quiet for a screen. Sorry. 
so this is your house? I apologize for the intrusion. I... No, it's not. It's, well, I do live here, but it's not mine. Well, I'll be out of here in a few minutes either way. I'm Tabby. Sorry that we couldn't meet in that cozier place. I stuck her hand out without thinking like I was about to grab her fingers and lift them up for a kiss. She followed over cautiously and bumped into my hand like she was trying to shake it. I heard a line that goes and such make you feel cold whenever they pass through you, but her handshakes just felt tingly, a little bit like licking a 9 volt battery. You just casually shake a ghost hand? Of course, I... I'm Evie, Evie, or Eve, I suppose. Actually, I uh, was called Eve. Anyway, please leave right now. You don't need to phone that badly, do you? You must have one at home. What year do you think this is? Never mind, don't answer that. I promise I'll be out here as soon as I grab myself, so don't worry over that. Should I just close the door, or are you coming out? Call the door swings shut on its own, too gently to even latch. Pale blue light flickers, and the door swings again, still too softly. Should I help her out of here, or... Wait, no. Alright, the thing isn't working. Anyhow, ma'am. What? You're right there? You startled me again. Anyhow, well anyway, how about I go find you different phone and then you can leave. Is that alright? Certainly, so she's probably never even seen the cell. I'm not sure I can leave this up to her. Much as I'd like to just leave now and drive home, don't have much chance at finding out where I am. Less where is my car parked without my phone. And of course I can't get to the car to go anywhere or get back to my apartment without my keys. I'll help you look. That's alright. It'll go faster if we... If I can't read that. I almost fell over flat on my face. Guess not. Alright then. Let's get what we need to get out of here. Parlor's empty aside from the areas I already checked. Another look into the coat closet doesn't turn up anything beyond the smell of must and dry rot. There's a few doors that seem to lead to side halls, but they're all either locked or jam tight. Let's hope that drunk Tabby wasn't somehow able to get in there. There's another open archway that leads into what looks like to be the dining room, then another short hall that leads to the two set of stairs. One going up, another headed down. Don't go down. I can figure out how I ended up here later. Right now, I need to pick a place and start searching. I want to go to the basement. Nothing good comes going in the basement. Nothing good comes from going in the basement. Nothing good comes from going in the basement. Nothing good comes from the basement. Might as well from. Nothing good comes from searching the basement. Okay. Sure, hallway leading downstairs seems a bit cleaner than the entryway, and there's a dim glow coming from an old lamp by the staircase. Stairs up are blocked here and are, I guess, more accurate to say they completely caved in. I'm going to end up in the basement either way. I'll take the gradual descent. There's an old portrait hanging at the top of the stairway. Well, old by relative standards anyway, maybe 20 or 30 years. There's a man sitting uncomfortably in a three-piece suit, and at first I thought it was a reproduction of an old vintage photo, one in black and white, but it turns out that it's just extremely drab. And what little color was there to start with has faded over time. And then there's his face, so I scratched her, torn away the face from the canvas and spattered red paint to cover the man's entire head. You might think that this is a warning flag or something ominous, but listen, I've been in a lot of haunted houses in my life. There's always some asshole breaking in and vandalizing shit, writing creepy messages or staging scenes to scare people who follow in after them. 
I doubt it's much more than the sound of ghosts and finding empty cans, a PBR tossed on the ground, and an empty lot. That or it's something that somebody did before the house was abandoned. If my old man had a Porsche of himself hanging in our house, I'd rip the face out of it a few times over by now. Honestly, it would have been therapeutic. Underneath the portrait, there's a faded nameplate that's been scratched through, but it's still easily legible. Christian Larksburg is the man's name, apparently. Hard to tell much about him from this picture other than that he seems like he wants to get out of there as soon as he can. You and me both. Mm. Well, you're not urgent enough. You kind of want to stick around a little bit. Fortunately, the basement had a necessity. Very terrifying childhood memory. Bare light bulbs hanging from a chain with a pull cord switch some 10 feet away. Still too dark to see in every corner, but there's just a narrow hall ahead. It's a bit wider than the stairs. At least that's how it seems at first. So halfway down this narrow corridor, there's an opening between two metal shelves that lead deeper inside. The area past the shelves looks like it's got the water heater, boiler, and most of the other mechanical guts of the house. People don't think about this stuff too much, but houses these days are built with a huge tangle of machines either in their belly or buried right underneath. Cellars, boiler rooms, crawl spaces, they're all part of the house that no one lives around and you really think about or visit. You use them constantly, but you don't see a water heater too often unless it breaks. Compared to the other basements I've seen, this one is... Yeah, pretty bad. Narrow hall that looks like it just goes to the dead end with a circuit breaker at the end is bad enough. But the fact that you can barely see a path through the metal shelves to right next to them almost makes it feel like the entire boiler room is lying in wait. Just hoping you'll pass by and notice it. The fact that there's at least 70 cellar crickets, a whole spool's worth of spider webs in the way, just to make it any friendlier. Honestly, not sure what I expected heading to the basement first. There's no way my stuff's down here, so I. Um. Wait. Those are my bloopers in the dust. Looks like some of the cobwebs got cleared up around here, too. The trail leading further down the narrow hall and a pad cleared through the boiler room as well. Unless someone was trapezing around here inside the levens, I was probably down here earlier tonight. Oh. And that's not part of the decor. Uh, took a minute for my eyes to take it out in the dim light, but there's a clipboard on top of the circuit breaker box. It's almost mine, I left someone else here. Also got a bright pink translucent clipboard covering leopard seals and whiptail lizards. Hey, what the hell is doing? Um, that's right. Starting to remember at least. Let's see what's in here. Alright, I don't remember the details yet, but at least now I'm pretty sure I'm here as a job and not as a result of another bar crawl, crawl with Shaz. Honestly, that makes me feel a hell of a lot better about my wallet's perspective survival, if nothing else. Investigating allegedly haunted houses isn't as bad as most people might think. We we do it full of shit, granted, but it's not a bad job. But you're also here by yourself, and that's just weird. Alright, so all it looks like it's about this place. I just got everything set up for the night. So that cock the fuck um but out and fall asleep in the middle of checking that record or something. My clipboard is full of helpful information at least. Helpful but dubious and probably not too trustworthy. I'm super clip is about local Hawkins really are. I'm in Larkspur House at 77 Oleander, just a few blocks north of downtown. It's been officially abandoned since the 90s, I think 92 specifically. Things we know about the house for sure are pretty limited. It belonged to the Larkspur's family since about the early 20th century, built 1929. Let's see. Stayed in the family for a few generations up until all the Larkspur's died inside of about two years. The former owner other property was Garrett Burtham Larkspur. The property's only other official resident at the time was his grandson, Christian. Probably his picture with the face torn out and that's hanging by the stairwell. Well, stairway. Things get messy after that. Gary and Gary. Gary is? 
Garrett and Christian both died sometime in 1992, a few months apart. The obituary I found for Chris puts him in the ground in September, but the other four has him died in May. Either way, Garrett Lashbury died of congestive heart failure in November of that year, and the house stood abandoned since then. Every other page I found is all about the outpouring of grief over Gary, but I can't find much about the rest of the family. There's no picture of Christian in the article, and all else it really mentions is that he was age 25. He died suddenly from unforeseen causes, and that his parents had died three years prior. And there's two things I hate about the work I do, and the first thing is that way that people just say it based on a guess, and that becomes part of the official story of a place. I remember now the reason my boss sent me out here to this house is this podcast you heard a few weeks ago where a couple did a lock in here, brought a second and set up cameras, everything like that. Then they went and pretty much read off the Wikipedia article for the place, traded speculation about whether ghosts killed Garrett Larkspur or if the family was cursed or not. Within a few days of the episode, about a dozen different paranormal research groups drove across state lines just to spend the night in the house. Since then, they all got a good deal of press writing on that first show's coattails. My boss naturally figured he sent me over. He's probably already got his article on it written up, so I'm not sure anything I do really amounts to much. Okay. Podcast started all of this, pulled in a few accounts from an early 2000s investigation that brought in a medium to read the place. He spent most of the time saying he got nothing, then toward the end started gushing about a curse on the family. If you don't look up anything on Luxury nowadays, that medium's account is really all you're going to find apart from county records and their obituaries. He claimed that Gary Luxford, the patriarch, had worked to bring the family back from the brink of ruin and cared more about his only daughter's survival than his own health. When Zara and her husband died in an accident, Gary's health started to fail. At this point, he never left the house, which at least is something I confirmed from the neighbors who were around at the time. Medium said that the grandson Christian was sickly since birth and Gary put all the rest of his energy into his grandson's well-being. When Christian succumbed to his illness in 92, allegedly Gary just stayed up in his room until he died in his sleep one night. So first his podcast repeats that, and 17 other places stopped by repeated too, and just published on a few sites and suddenly there's the official account somehow. Maybe it is. I say how easy the stories of houses and people get crushed down other shit like Uji or Uji board sessions or aesthetic on the record or shit some mediums doss off the cuff. Hope you follow in on the initiative or initial way and all sorts of strange bits to the story too. One insisted there was a lonely old woman in the kitchen. So many claimed demons were in the boiler room. So have you been into a boiler room? It's not like the junk of drawers of demons. Whether they're in there or not. That's definitely where you find them, if they're around. If I was a little set up readings down here, the camera should be somewhere nearby. Okay. I gotta get out of here and lie. Down. You know, not one of those shows mentioned Evie, Evie or Eve. Not because I avoid people whenever possible. Okay then. Sorry. Oh, Alright, weren't you trying to scare me under here anyway? That was probably the best I could do, so I've kind of given up. Oh. I could have counted on the fact that I'm a ghost being enough, so when you didn't run after that. Oh. What's wrong? Are you hurt? You had to say that. That I'm a ghost? It's pretty obvious, I think. Yeah, now I can't play dumb. Pretend I just didn't notice. Sorry, I'm not the one who barged in and set up cameras and shit in your house. Well, I am the one. Well, that's what you're doing. It's okay, honestly. I barely live in the top parts of the house. I don't even take up all the basement. Still, if you want, I'll get rid of all the tapes that keep catch that catch you on them. Oh. You don't have to get rid of them. Or, I mean, maybe you could just leave them and I could watch them and see how I look on film. I've never seen myself on camera before. It's kind of exciting. I'm not sure if the camera catches you. 
to the doubt it will, I'm also not convinced all the digital stuff we look around these scenes is really catching anything but static and dust. And I'm sorry again, if you see my phone or wallet or keys, could you let me know? I'll leave as soon as I get that. I get the equipment I left around here. Yeah, I'll let you know. Wait. Actually, I think I saw all of it outside on the front door across the street. It's weird. I mean, that was more convincing than the screen you tried earlier. That was just a bit more seat that idled. I probably don't believe you. Uh, Eve stinks, sinks, and bit and flickers. She looks dejected. Should have just saved that one. Don't laugh. I'm trying my best to make you leave right away. I didn't laugh. Yeah, I did. I did just laugh. You sound pretty cute when you're upset, so it's hard to keep a straight face. Ah, uh, thanks. You too. Oh, hell. <laughs> you have to run, just... Alright then. Not sure why I felt so relieved to talk to a ghost. I could probably be having an existential crisis about now, but I'm way too fucking tired to manage that. Should, should I try to find her, or... No, I gotta get out of this house. The camera set up should be in the boiler room. I think I brought three in here with me tonight. Yeah, as well pack everything up on the way. Grab the clipboard and hooks it onto the car carboner on my belt. Now Silas was a pain to hold on while I'm looking around. Now time to go through the stack of metal shelves and into the dark creepy boiler room. I guess past Tappy. Um did it just fine though. So nothing to worry about. Alright, and with that, we'll say go to the main menu. Yes. Alright. <laughs> okay, well that was um 77 Olander Avenue Ghost House. Um yeah, this is just a new investigation visual novel. So I mean if y'all want to further investigate the story, see, you know, what's going on with the um Larkspur family, I think I got that right. Um, I will link them below for y'all to try. Um, again, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see y'all in the next one.